Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good and that's his nature. Tell your neighbor, welcome to the service. Tell them you have a divine appointment with God. Amen. I'm excited to be in the service today. I celebrate uh, my colleague and big brother, Pastor Victor. He was to be sharing today, but something came up and he had to attend to family matters. And I'm honored to stand in the gap for him. Amen. Amen. So a question, how many of us come to Paki, but they've never come to the Wednesday service? This is your first time to the Wednesday service. Can I see you by a show of hand? Anybody? I have a gift. Where? Oh, there is mommy there. Mom, I have a gift for you, but we just want to appreciate you for taking a different uh, scenery and environment and coming to the service on Wednesday evening, yeah? So I'll, give, I'll be giving you something later on uh, at the end of the service. Allow me to acknowledge our associate pastor in the house. Pastor Simon is in the house. <laughs> Amen. He's hiding somewhere, but we can see him. And we celebrate that you're here, Pasi. We are glad to have you. Amen? Amen. The announcement that I, I want to make, first tell your neighbor, you're looking good. Tell them better than yesterday. <laughs> and tomorrow, you will shine. Meta, meta. Sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> Until you wear shades. Amen. Receive greetings from Pastor Ambrose. And uh, during the time that uh, our high school students were burning schools, Pastor Ambrose, the Lord spoke to him to put together statements for the youth that will bring transformation to this nation. Amen? So he has a new booklet, and it's called Youth Ablaze by Pastor Ambrose. And he's challenging us to ensure that as many youth as possible get this book. He believes it's a time, uh, a timely message for our youth and the booklets will be going for 150 and as you're going out, Juliana will be having copies. If you have youth in your family, please get copies. If you're teachers in the service today, buy for your students. Amen? Because the Lord specifically put this message in his heart during that time that we were worried about our students. And he's calling them to be ablaze and on fire for God. And these 12 statements will transform their lives. Amen? So mom will get a copy after the service. In case you have a youth, give it to them. In case you have a nephew or a niece, you can also give it to them. Amen? I'll ask media to be getting ready. Tell your neighbor, we're going to watch a clip before the sermon today. <laughs> We are going to watch a clip before the one, and I'll tell you why I thought we should watch this clip, because when I was asked to come and share this evening, I had been watching this sermon, but I just want you to see a snippet of what I believe God has put in my heart for us this evening. Are we ready? Upstairs, are we ready? Yes, so we will watch just briefly, like a minute or two, and then we'll come back to the scriptures, and my message for us tonight will be safe and secure in God. Tell your neighbor, safe and secure in God. Amen. Let's watch the clip first. I need to know what you want me to do in this um, situation I've got. But you know, really, while we're talking, I'd just like to know really what you want me to do with my whole life. I'm kind of confused and <laughs> mixed up about the whole thing. You know, what's, I mean, since I've got you, you know, what's the call on my life? And, you know, what's going to happen with my kids? And, you know, how, how's all this stuff going to, huh? What? Huh? Oh, you want me to read the word? Huh? <laughs> Oh, you mean you want me to act like I believe it? Oh. oh, you put your Holy Spirit in me and you want me to learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit, huh? 
Well, wouldn't it just be a whole lot easier if you'd just tell me? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think if you'd just tell me, it would just make everything a lot easier. Because, you know, that being led by the Spirit stuff, huh, you got to go now? Oh. Oh, you, oh, oh, okay, you already told me once, you're not going to tell me again. Okay, I get it. All right, well, love you, Lord. Bye. Amen. Let's appreciate the woman of God. We celebrate Joyce Meyer. And as we know, in this season, we are also doing a study by Joyce Meyer. Since the day, and the maturity department is encouraging us to just get the book and do it as a family. Amen. How many of you identify with her? How many of you feel like, Pastor Flav, I wish I could just pick the phone and just tell God this is Flav from down here on earth. And I just want us to have a conversation, you know, concerning this situation. And not just this situation, in fact, concerning my life, now that I have gotten you online, can we just talk? Because I'm a bit confused. How many of you feel like you, you would just want to dial the helpline of heaven? Amen? Amen. And when we are living in the 21st century, as we look at divine security and a time to uh, preserve when we talk about security, we are not talking about the safety and security systems that many organizations and institutions and even homes are putting together. When we are talking about security, we are talking about security for you as an individual and what concerns you. But as I was preparing for this message, the Holy Spirit put something in my heart that made me get challenged a bit. And the Holy Spirit was saying, Flav, I think the 21st century compared to the times of old is a very tricky time. And the reason is, previously, if you read in the Bible, many of the people that God was calling to do something felt a bit insecure concerning themselves. They felt they were not qualified. They felt like they were not ready. And they felt like maybe you picked the wrong on God. But the Lord was telling me that, Flav, in the 21st century, because of the advancement of information, advancement of technology, advancement of discoveries, guess what? We are in a very sensitive place because people might end up being too confident in themselves. And we can lose the balance between the safety of knowing that in my own accord, I am not secure or based on the knowledge and the ability that I have, I feel like I am able to do this. And so tonight, I want us to remember that we only find our safety and our security if we are in God. That confidence that you have concerning your life, is it based on the job that you have? Is it based on the money that you have? Is it based on the mortgage that you have cleared? Is it based on the pension that is accumulating and you're feeling like even my future is secure? That's the danger that we are living in in the 21st century. That we might find safety and security in the things that we can touch or reach, as compared to in the God who is not visible, but yet very real and amongst us, despite the discoveries and the knowledge that we have gained over the time. And so when I, when I watched that clip, I was like, this is so amazing if it was just possible for us to dial and just talk to God, especially with all this technology that is around us. But as we are talking about that, I want us to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 9 to 15. 
And then I'll come to Proverbs chapter 3 from verse uh, 5 to 6. And I was trying to ask God, you know, is it a bad thing that it is exciting for us to want to have knowledge, for us to want to have everything that we need to feel secure? And I was asking him, but you're the same person who created us in your image and likeness. And my prayer is that tonight you will get some answers even as I'm getting some answers also. And the scripture says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse uh, 9 to uh, 15, what do workers gain from their toil? toil? And it continues to say that I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. Tell your neighbor, find satisfaction in all your toil. And it continues to say, this is the gift of God. And finally it says, I, in verse 14, I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will fear him. Whatever is has already been and whatever will be has been before and God will call the past to account. Two things that I want us to pick from there. There is the essence of expectation. Tell your neighbor expectation. And tell them there is also the essence of eternity. Tell them there is also the essence of eternity. So all of us seated here, there is an expectation you have towards life. And there is nothing wrong with it. But at the same time, there is eternity that is in you and I. But unfortunately, how can you quantify eternity? None of us knows how long it will take until we get to eternity. Now, let's go back to uh, 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 Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, and we'll come back to Ecclesiastes. And this is a scripture that most of us know. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And it says, but in all your ways do what? Acknowledge him. Submit to him and he will make your paths straight. And so as I was asking, how do we find ourselves safe and secure in God. And these are the three things that I wanted to share tonight. That we have to remember that trusting in God means. Trusting in God means. You know that God's reliability. God's truth. And God's ability is something that you can firmly believe in. Are we together? That you have a firm belief that God is reliable, God is truthful, and God has the ability to do what he said he would do. It's not that he's going to try or do something. And as I was reading this, when I wrote, read and I say that trust in God, when I looked at that definition of trust and the reliability and the truth and his ability, I realize that our safety and security in God is because he's a covenant-keeping God, right? And the good thing is that he doesn't make a covenant with us. In fact, he makes a covenant 
with himself in us. So as I was looking at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and how he made those covenants, and everything has remained to be eternal, I was asking myself, Lord, can Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob be the example of what it means for us to find our safety and security in him? And when I looked at trusting, I saw Abraham. Abraham being called to go to a place that he doesn't know. And you know what the Lord was telling me? The Lord was telling me, Flav, the only comparison I could give him towards what I am about to do was my unreachable creation. Can you imagine? You know the way I can tell you as fit as a fiddle, something that you can compare to. God is telling you that the number of children I am going to give you, walk outside, look to the stars, and if you are able to count them, that is the number of offspring I am going to give you. Can you imagine? Just put yourself in Abraham's shoes. He calls you to believe in him, and the only comparison he is giving you is his unreachable creation. You cannot even reach it. I wish he told me, I will give you as many children as trees in the Karura forest. You know, you can dare go and try count the trees. But when he's calling out Abraham, our father of faith, He's telling him, look to the sky and look to the stars. And if you're able to count them, then that's how much, how many children I'm going to give you. <laughs> Just think about it. Bring it to your context. And look at the assignment that probably God is calling you to do. And some of you are like, Percy, if I told you the comparison he's giving to me, it's unreachable. Tell your neighbor you are the lucky one. If it's unreachable, you are, you are with God. Tell them you are with God, Kwanzaa. Apo, that's how you will find your safety and security. Amen? Some of us think God will come and tell you that which is familiar to do. When it's familiar to do to you and you, it's reliable to you, you're finding your safety in yourself. Are you listening to what I am saying? Because the Lord has also been challenging me. He, was, he has been telling me, Flav, any time you find that you're, when you think about doing that thing, you can depend on your own strength, then it means you are relying on yourself. But when you look at it and you know that you are not able to do it because the promises I'm making to you are not even reachable, but I have made that promise, then know that is divine security. And God is preserving me from the issue of worry, and I'm going to leave it to him. But the number two thing is that he says lean on God. Tell your neighbor lean on God. Yeah, you know, lean on me, lean on God. <laughs> Lean on God. They, they like saying that when you look at the body language between a man and a woman, and when the, the, the man is drawn to the woman, you can tell. I like these people who study the body language. And they say that oftentimes, if a, if a guy likes a lady, they will always want to lean on their side. Atakama ni kukros mgu, atataka kukros mgu side yeye. That person is on. You know, Yani, you are just inclined to this person. You can't help it. And, 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 and when I was looking at the word lean, it means find support and inspiration from God. Because in that journey of trying to connect with the unreachable, there is a place you will need a word. Tell your neighbor there is a place you will need a word. But who is the source of that word? Who is the source of the support you need or the inspiration 
you need. And in this scenario, I was looking at Isaac. Can you imagine? Isaac thinks, e place imekauka, my friend. I need to move from this place as soon as I can. But I, God comes and tells Isaac, you need to stay in this land. And you know the comparison he gives him now? Abraham, he gave him the unreachable creation. Now, he's giving Isaac the untouchable promises. Because if it's drought, you want God to give you things, production that you can see. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, seeing is believing. <laughs> According to Isaac at this time, you want to see so that you can believe. But when you look at what uh, Isaac is told by God, I want us to read this because I was laughing. I was like, what has this got to do with famine, Lord? You are not saying, I am bringing rain. You are not saying, I am bringing you uh, hybrid seeds <laughs> that will bring a harvest. You are bringing me promises that are not even connected with what I am going through right now. And in Genesis chapter 26, verse 2 to 6, I would want us to read, uh, to read that. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 2 to 6, when God is talking to Isaac and Isaac is thinking that we need to go. And he says, the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendant, I will give all these lands. And then listen to what he tells him. To confirm the oath that I swore to your father. And he says, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and will give them all these lands, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Me, I wanted to hear rain. I wanted to hear you will be, your land will be fertile. Because <laughs> we are in a desert. Right? We are in a desert. Like what, what uh, Joyce Meyer was saying. You are like, Lord, now that we are on this line, tell me where are you taking me with regards to my call? Where are you taking my children? And the Lord says, go and read the word. Oh, the Holy Spirit is in you. Oh, he will guide you. And now I have to go. Based on the covenant that he has established with what Christ did, everything we need to do will be based on the untouchable promises of God. And it's only the word. Everything else will pass away. Anything that is to be, or should be, has already been. And it's all here. There is no new discovery that is going to come that is not in line with this word. I promise you, even the crazy things we are seeing, the signs of the end coming, the, the, the times that we are living in as the end times, it's all here. Even human beings wanting to create human beings, it, it is here. You just need to go back to the oath that he has made. And for us, that oath is his word. So when you go back to the comparison of his untouchable promises, then you are safe and secure. Then you will be safe and secure. Because whatever will be, he has already established. Anything that you think, you will discover somehow you could still find it in the word. You could still find it in the word. And that's why sometimes I like watching movies once in a while. I am like, if the mind of that person has conceived it, where is God in that? Is it bringing out the blessings that come with God or the sentencing that has already happened to the evil one? And there are his followers who are doing what they are supposed to do. It's either or. Choose today, life or death. He doesn't give you three options. He just gives you two to make it so easy. So number one, trusting in the Lord means that you have to have a firm belief 
in his reliability, his truth, and his ability. And oftentimes, his comparison will be something so unreachable to you. According to your own understanding, it's unreachable. But number two, when you're leaning on God, you have to find support and inspiration only from him. Because the only comparison he will give you is the untouchable promises, which are already written in his word. But the last thing which I really liked, it's like it's, it said acknowledge him. Tell your neighbor, acknowledge him. Acknowledging him means you accept and admit he's God. I think some of us have not gotten to the place of accepting and admitting that he's God. You're still debating. There are certain things that you're still wondering. Can I play around with this? Can I do my own things? And guess what? Jacob comes. And with Jacob, it is not a comparison. It is an impact that transforms him and is tangible and can be seen by other people. It is so personal. It is not out there. It is not compared to anything. It is personal. It becomes a personal transformation that can be seen. Let's read uh, Genesis 32 verse 26 to 30 and then we'll be praying shortly. Genesis 32 from verse 26 to 30. Genesis 32 26 to 30. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Then he says, the man asks, what is your name, Jacob? He answered. Then he said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed me there. I want us to go a bit further. So he said, so Jacob called the place Peniel. It is because, listen to that, I saw God face to face. And yet my life was spared. If we get to the place of trusting God, Leaning on God. He wants to take us to this level of acknowledging him. And he will give you and I a personalized encounter. That you will know that you know that you know. I was with God. And the intensity of what God will do in your life will scare you that you will feel like I should have just transitioned to heaven right now. But because he wants you and I to be a testimony to others, he will leave you there. So that now people will be looking at you and seeing the transformation that has happened to you. And they will believe in your God. And they will change your name. Instead of the con man that Jacob was, now he becomes the father of the nations and the tribes of Israel. Then we find our security in God. All this time he has been preserving you. The time you have been trying to rely on your own ability, like Abraham, you're trying to be convinced by other things. You have to remember, when I compare that which God wants to do, it's unreachable according to my standard. But when I trust in him, that which is impossible with man becomes possible with God. When you lean on him and incline on him, because you know, when you need to lean on someone, what does that mean? Your strength is a bit weary, right? 
when that strength is coming out, then you will remember his promises are yes and amen. I don't need to debate them. I don't need to negotiate them. When God says it, he has said it, and there is no discussion about it. And lastly, when he gives you a personalized experience, no one will ever move you from where God will plant you. No one. Is there somebody who is saying, Lord, do something? That glory will not even come to me. Human beings will be scared to praise you because they will see the God in you. I don't want people to look at Flavia and say, oh, Flavia did this, oh, Flavia did this. I want people to look at Flavia and say, Yanni, the way Flav believes in her God. I want to believe in my God like she does. And so you and I today read the scriptures. Why? Because these people are a multitude of witnesses of what God can do. As we stand on our feet, so let's stand on our feet. Take a moment and do a personal audit. Where have you been finding your safety and security? And there's nothing wrong with working hard, speeding up the mortgage repayment, having a good pension fund. There's nothing wrong at all with that. But where have you seen God in that journey? Maybe for some of us, it is coming to acknowledge that I actually thought I did it in my own strength, but it was actually God who wanted me to be a testimony to others, that he can bless you indeed. You just might need to just take audit and tell God, I thank you for this, I thank you for this, I thank you for this, because it is you, by your grace, by your grace and through faith, I have this. For some of us, maybe you haven't even started that journey. You look at yourself and you feel insecure. And you're like, I am not able to do this. Guess what? That's where you open the door for God. I like saying sometimes, stand, stand back. Let God show off for himself. Let him show up and show off. He likes showing up and showing off because he likes receiving all the glory. Some of us need to tell God, I am stepping aside, show up and show off for your namesake. Let me just step aside. You just do it the way you know best. You just do it. Some of us are weak and you're feeling like, where am I going to get the strength? Guess what? He's here. You can lean on him. Just lean on him. Tell him, I, I put my head on, my, on your shoulder and I, I want to find rest in you. My safety and security is in you. If you were to ask me, you shouldn't be looking at me. You should be talking to him. Say something to him. Tell him. Bring it to him. He is faithful and just. He is not man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should change his mind. What he told you that looked so far-fetched. It was actually him talking to you. What you thought, this is not practical. I needed a different kind of word. It was actually God because his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. But he has the best interests concerning our lives at his heart. So just take a moment. Take a moment and pray to him. Take a moment and pray to him. Take a moment and pray to him. I want, I want to pray for a particular type of people. I feel in my heart that there are people who are thinking of setting up companies. But when they look at the risks involved, they are like, this is too big for me. When I look at this risk, I don't have any guarantee that this will succeed. If you are here and you are putting together your thoughts on a company, you have talked to a few people, and everybody is telling you, this business is risk averse. Don't even try it. If you're here, I want you to come. Those ones, I want you to come. I want you to just take a step of faith and say, Lord, when it comes to dealing with you, 
we take the biggest risks we've ever thought. The comparison that God is giving you, you're thinking, this is unreachable to me. This is too big. It's not realistic. If you're there and you're putting that business proposal together and people are telling you it's too rich of us, you're the people I want to pray with tonight. That you will know that your safety and your security is not based on the trends that are going on right now. It's based on the promises of God. It's based on the promises of God. It's based on the promises of God. And even when you're weary, as you step out, God will be with you to strengthen you and to push you on and to say, you go ahead and do it. Yeah, just commit it to God. Just commit it to God. Somebody wrote and said that friends of God are the most risk-bound people because he will call you to places you have never gone. He will call you to step out in areas that you have never thought of. He will call you to speak out things that have not been spoken before. And he will also call you to a dream that is not realistic to others. So friends of God are the most risk averse kind of people because he wants to do it through them. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for bringing us to your house this evening. Thank you because we had a divine appointment with you tonight. And thank you for reminding us that we find our safety and security in you. Thank you for reminding us that we should trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Lord, people have stepped out today in faith, knowing that you are reliable, you are truthful, and you have the ability. Lord, people have stepped out tonight knowing that they can lean on you and not on their own understanding. Knowing that Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, you are the support we need and the inspiration. Like you inspired Isaac to just stay in the land. Despite that fact that it was dry, you told him to stay. Why? Because of the oath that you, have, you had made. That we will be blessed to become a blessing. Some of us have come forward saying, Lord, I need to acknowledge you. Do something so tangible that it will be undeniable that I have been in your presence. That's our prayer tonight. That when we leave this sanctuary, you will do something that others will even testify on our behalf. They will say something happened to you in the Wednesday prayer service. And we will be a testimony for the sake of your name. Our prayer is that we will not bring glory to ourselves, but we will bring glory and honor to the Most High God. Thank you for bringing us to a place of security. And thank you for having preserved us all this time so that today would be the day we would have an an encounter with you and the heavens would open. And Father, I pray this name for us. For the families represented here. For the people who have come on behalf of family members. Wives who are praying for their husbands. Husbands who are praying for their wives. Parents who are praying for their children. Children who are praying for their parents. Employees who are praying for their bosses. Bosses who are also praying for their employees. May you meet each and every one of us at our point of need tonight because you're a good God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because we know every time we gather, a chronicle is written in heaven. A chronicle has been written tonight that the marketplace will be changing and people in senior leadership will be changing because they know they find their safety and security in you because we have prayed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God's people say it. Amen. Let's give God a mighty hand clap. Father, we thank you. We can do better than that. Come on.
Come on, come on, come on, come on. We celebrate you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming forward. You can take uh, your seats even as we uh, stand and share in the benediction. Amen. Amen. Are you glad that you came? Are you glad? I feel a shift in the atmosphere. Tell your neighbor there's a shift. Tell your neighbor there's a shift. Amen. The, the gears are changing. Amen. And for those of us watching uh, online, the shift is also happening to you. I believe you joined in in the prayer and the Lord will do something beautiful to you. It's also the ninth month. Tell your neighbor, it's the ninth month. Tell them, push. <laughs> tell, them, tell them, let the baby come. <laughs> let it be seen. <laughs> that which has been hidden for nine months. <laughs> let it come forth. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them, surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your lives. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Remind your neighbor there's a cup of tea. Please get to get a cup of tea. Get to know someone. If you need the book, Juliana is somewhere with the book. You can also get the Youth Ablaze. Amen. The Lord bless you. <laughs>